All right, you're with Al, and this is Chronicles of a Not Yet Champion Golfer. This is a bit like random this, but it's the last day you can play golf today before the lockdown. A tea time come free. It's 3.51 my tea time and it goes dark at like half four. That's how desperate I am to play. So I thought, you know what, I'll come out, play a few holes and play, hopefully try and get five in, but play a game where I can sort of integrate that shot shaping thing into on course, because that's what I always try and do in my practice and apply it to on the course. And also try and have a better performance than I did in my shot shaping challenge on the practice ground. So what I'm gonna do is, is I've got a number random randomizer, random jobby number, random jobby, number one to three, yeah? One is straight, two is a fade, three is a draw, and whatever this tells me, that's the shot I've got to hit. So first hole, three, draw, that's highly disappointing because this all suits a fade with my driver. I can drive the green a bit of draw with a, dri a fade of the driver. I'm not attempting draw with driver because that is the right side. And they are cars going up and down the road. So no driver. Okay, four iron. Not a massive draw. I've just got to attempt to move it right to left. Edge of the trap up on the right there, left edge of it, moving it back into the middle. So it's only hopefully a five yard draw. Should make for some interesting shot traces there. No, that's... That's no draw, no draw that. Try and hit a draw, hit a fade. So the main point of the game is you actually try and hit the shape that comes up. I'm not always gonna execute it. And the kind of point of it, that's a decent demonstration because I'd never try and hit a, a draw up there. And it's not the right shot, to be honest, but it's kind of like that game we played with the Biff, the wrong shot. It makes you feel a little bit uncomfortable at times, trying to hit a shape that you might not be comfortable with or one that doesn't quite suit the hole, but you've got to try and make it work. And one, it's a bit of fun. And it kind of prepares you for when you're on the course and you've got a shot that you don't really want to play. But you've got to find a way to play it. And that's what it's about. So once I get within 100 yards, the shot shaping kind of goes out. I'm not trying to shape it from 100 yards, but it's more so on the full shots. I'll talk through the shots, the shapes I've got to hit, and then it should throw up a couple of different situations as well when, on the, when we're on the course. And, I'm going to try and run round, so if I'm out of breath, it's because I'm going to be sprinting up the holes, trying to get the five holes in. Last time you can play, you should try and get 18 holes in an hour. It's got to appreciate it, haven't you? No more angry, no more angry out. Just appreciate golf, because I can. Just got it inside that 100 yard threshold, so I don't need to shape this. 98 yards, uphill. So I reckon it's about a four yard uphill. So there's 102, bit cold. Probably counts for about three yards, 105 yards. No wind, so I think it's playing about 105. This is my 54. This goes about 110, 115 at a push. So we're gonna go down the grip and play a nice smooth one, should be spot on. Efficiency, in the way I talk it through there, efficiency. Right, sat down a little bit in the rough here, so because it's sat down, bus, going a little bit further back in the stance, hands forward, and I just want to make sure that I feel that I turn through it, because that's going to allow me to keep my hands forward a little bit steeper and get ball first. Go a bit, go a bit, go a bit. Mm. Don't know if it's got there, that. Might have been a bit ball and turf rather than ball then turf. Got it mixed up. It was online. Look at the positives in that. Yeah, it was a little bit heavy that, and it's 25 foot short, but always pretend like you've hit it good till it's landed. Don't react, because it could go close. You might just misjudge a swing. 
but then once it lands short, then go, ah, oh, I fatted it then. Never before though. Sit. Hit it. Hit it. Sit. Sit. Oh my god. Good thing with this. There's dew on the green now, so you can see what way it's rolled from the other side. Always watch from the other side. See mate. It's interrupting, so that's good, isn't it? I'm trying to film here. It's my last chance. You watch it from the other side, see what it does when it breaks. And there's dew on the green, so you can see this went left to right from the other side. So this one's right to left. Oh, and it did go, oh, three pot to start, that's, start to your last round of golf for a while, three pot to start. Not getting angry, three pot to start, not getting angry. Easy stall on the course, not getting angry with that. Bogey the first, like, it's quite nice to start with a bogey, innit? You know when you rush to get out and that, and then you start with a bogey and, like, you're dead keen, because it's the last time you come out and you go, but you don't get angry with it, though. That's the whole point, is you don't get angry, you just think, I'm so happy to be out here. Doesn't matter that you've bogeyed the first. Good. Hole two. Random. Number one. Straight. Straight smash job, he would drive at that. My straight is a fade though, so how does that work? I'm trying to hit it straight, just hit it straight. See the shot straight and play it. Straight over the top and go left. It went straight, to be fair. Just straight left. This is what I mean though about the like, sort of discomfort over the ball because me trying to play a straight shot with driver, because I generally hit fade with it and play for it all the time. So trying to hit it straight, gotta be honest, I I don't mean this to sound like I don't know what I'm talking about. I don't mean it in this way, but I stand over the ball and don't really know what to do. I struggle to see it straight. A five yard fade, which is next to nothing. I can see that. And you make a better swing when you stood there, seeing that shot that you feel comfortable with. But that's the whole point, is being able to make a swing when sometimes I'm not gonna be able to hit the fade. There may be a tree left and I'm not able to hit the fade off the tee. So you've got to be able to make sure you can commit to a shot. Whereas that one, to be honest with you, trying to hit the fate, hit it straight, I kind of fear losing it right. And as a result of that, I've missed it left. So here's the thing as well with this game. Now, if I'm behind a tree, the random number job he could throw out the complete wrong shot, but that puts the premium on getting it in play off the tee. And that's what affects your score. So you've still got to play the shot it sells you. And if I can't get the green, I've still got to try and play a little fade if it's a fade that it tells me to get it in the best place to try and get it up and down. Two. Low fade. 102 yards as well. Two yards outside the threshold. That's good, isn't it? Got to play it. A draw would have been better to keep it down. 102. Covering that bunker is only 76, so. Eight iron. Weight left side, try and stop this branch from poking my eye out. Low fade. Oh, it's horrendous, this. Is it? That's amazing. They were watching as well. Did you film that as well, yeah? Send me that. Send me that. Evidence. <laughs> yes. <laughs> That's the whole fun of it. Look where I've hit that. Couldn't have landed that any better. That's the whole fun of it. Stupid shots like that. Gives you the chance to hit those sort of stupid shots you wouldn't always get to play. And they're enjoyable to play. Just got to enjoy the challenge and just slow down how fast I'm speaking because I'm trying to run round. Out of breath. Just clipped the tree. <laughs> just clipped it. Did you get that? Yeah, it's on, yeah. I don't know if it's got the, the pan to get you, but probably picked up the noise. 
go, go. Oh, wow. I've had crowds everywhere. What an absolutely ridiculous game this is. Bogey. Birdie from under the tree. People watching me as well under pressure. That's what I need, under pressure. Third hole. Two. Fade again. Yes, fade. Par five, slightly left to right. Hole suits the fade. I like the fade. There's a ball just bounced in front of me there. Left edge of that trap, move it back. Just feel like it stands slightly open to where the club face is, literally. Just don't over release it. Yep. Yep, yep, fade, fade machine. Don't know if you can see in the swings, it'd be quite interesting for me to watch them back. But the one on the second there, trying to hit the one that goes straight, like you'll probably see. It was a bit steep because I'm fearing losing it right, whereas that one felt so much more committed because there's trees all up the left here and it's dead in them trees. But I see the fade so much more comfortably with driver and I feel like I can stand there, commit to it. Don't lose much distance. I know I'm, I'll say I'm pretty strong at that shot now. That's one thing actually in the past, I've struggled to sort of say I'm good at that. I don't know why, like it's, I don't, know whether I've seen it as being like cocky or something but I'm quick enough to say I'm not very good at that but not that quick to say I'm good at that whereas I am good at that so that is my go-to fade I am good at the fade I'm good at the draw I'm just not as good as I need to be rambling now and I just get to your ball right I don't mind straight here because the pins in the middle so straight, if I hit it left or right of it, it's going to be on the green. So don't mind straight. Actually, don't mind any shape middle pin. Three, it's a draw. Probably the least one I was looking for, but I was very good at this on the practice ground. One, nine, eight. Par five, remember. It's cold. I'm hitting four iron. 198 is normally 5 iron yardage, but it is cold out here, ball's not going anywhere. Starting it, if you can see the white post, I don't know if you can see it on camera, white post about 10 yards right of that pin, and just move it back. I feel like if it doesn't turn enough, it's only going to be 15 feet right, but if it overturns, there's more room then left. If I sort of go just right a bit and overturn it, left is not where you want to miss, so draw it off that white stake. No more, no more than that, no more than that, no more than that. Mm, overturned it. Well, to be honest, I don't think I did overturn it. The old thing of not starting it far enough right, which is something that I was doing when I was on the practice ground and something I find I do quite a bit. And it's these shots that I just need to get a bit more control with. I don't feel like it would take me too long to do. I feel like it's just a case of practicing them. And there's no reason not to, I mean there is reason not to because I'm not allowed on a golf course, but in general, there's no reason not to because it's actually probably the most fun practice you can do, moving it loads. You can actually have a laugh doing it. I used to do it as a kid all the time, practice like ridiculous shots. I don't really do it anymore, more like a bit too serious. Get back to that, enjoying the practice, shaping it all over the place. Got to do the serious stuff as well, but yeah, hopefully I'm on the green here. It's getting cold, I'm on the green by the way. There I am. Always try and look what it's gonna do, sort of the last third of the putt. Cause that's when it's not gonna have anywhere near as much pace and where it's gonna take the most break. And then you can picture up where it's gonna go in. Then you leave it miles short, nowhere near the line then. So that's kind of the process you're after. Kind of talk it through, see what you want to do and then come do the complete opposite. That's what you're after. Ah, not a problem. Never in doubt. Two pot birdie that. One under through three, playing this game. 
and I've had a couple of draws in there. It's not like they've all been fades. So, I'll take it. I do feel like I'm running around though and speaking very, very quickly. I find this in tournaments sometimes, like a rush, aware that you've got to keep up with the group in front. And then my rhythm goes like out the window in terms of process and routine and everything. This is actually a good test to try and slow myself down over the ball, get back into routine and then run up to it and then hit it again. 122 off this tee. Straight. Oh, I'm happy with straight because I'm only hitting wedge. Yeah, I'll take that. Oh, stuck underneath it. That is better. Come on now. Oh, that is awful. Stuck underneath it. No real excuse for that one because it wasn't like I had to try and play a shape. It was literally 122 yards. That is a shot recently. Like the wedges, I've been losing it a bit right. I watched that back, and one thing I've forgotten to do that I've been conscious of recently is I've been losing it right. My shoulders are massively open on those shots. Massively open. And I've only realised through watching these videos, and then I'd be very surprised if they weren't massively open then. And then a back up, get stuck underneath it, block it. Can still chip in though. It is a holeable chip. I mean, every chip you should be trying to hold. If you're aiming at the hole, you should be trying to hold it. So you want to see it like a putt. You want to see it rolling in. You want to actually read it because, like I said, you're trying to hold it. Pick your landing spot. I've got 58 here. Just pop it up. Land it about here. And then let it run in a little bit right to left at the hole. Ah, oh, short. Didn't move either. Under hit it. It's up and down, but just want to threaten from there, really. Just wasn't quite aggressive enough with that chip. It's an up and down, but it was as straightforward as a chip can be. Still got to play it, I suppose. Just so you could see where I picked the landing spot, come up a little short, it was a little negative on it. Fortunately, it came out with no spin, so it run out a little bit and it was only a tap in for a three. So what are we? One under three, four. We're going to get the last hole in, five holes. I'm, I'm pleased with that. I wasn't sure that it was going to last hole for a while. What shape we got to hit? Two. Fade, isn't it? Two. Yes. Yes. Thought that was draw then. Fade. Right, I'm going to try a different one now. I'm going to play for a very low fade. Very low. Blowing a gale and he it very low with that slider. Just because that's what this game is. Do a bit of trial and error. Don't know what's going to happen here. I haven't played this shot for about three years. See it low. One thing with teeing it low is generally, generally, I am always going to move it left to right, so that kind of creates the shape for me to start with. Set up still ball forward, but weight more on my left side and just keep it there and move the butt of the club across me, making sure it's coming out low, squeezing that little fade out. Yeah, I like that. I like that. I did like that. Pictured it a little lower. Thought I might have took those reeds out, but still liked it. I'm like talking on the run here. It would have been easy to not come out, but I'm glad I did. I think when you've just got a few holes to play as well, you've only got an hour or so, it's good to play this sort of game. Thought of it all by myself. Random thing on my phone. Ducks there, look at them. Sorry, this is the last time I'm going to see you for a bit now. There they are. So I'm sorry, and the more hens, and they're all mixing. Three more, four more hens. One, two, three, four, five, six. six ducks. I'm sorry, I won't see you for a bit, but I will come back at some point. Just keep yourselves warm because it's getting colder now. Just keep. How do they keep warm? I mean, 
they must have some sort of insulation because they'd fly away otherwise wouldn't they and go somewhere warmer but I think they must have it's the water's freezing but then they must be waterproof as well so they're like a waterproof jacket really keeps you warm and dry right back left pin here let me zoom in can you see it there back left red flag this is one where I wouldn't mind a draw because that's the only way I can get close to this pin really without risking missing it left because to get close to it with a fade I've got to start at left edge of the green and if it doesn't move you've missed the green but it's straight to finish straight to finish see now back left pin I don't feel like I can aim straight at it because I feel straight kind of brings right and left into play if you're swinging it good it shouldn't miss by much but even so back left if I go straight at it and I pull it even five yards I've missed the green left and I've short sided myself so I'm gonna have to aim slightly right at this and play a little safe hitting a straight one one five five Good solid eight iron in this temperature. So we're aiming five yards right at that pin. It's up the right. I pushed it a bit because I was aiming kind of middle of the green. I pushed it and now it's quite a bit right at the pin. And that's why I mean, I'd always rather be playing just some sort of shape where it's moving towards the target or moving away from trouble. I just always prefer even if it's just a couple of yards don't really feel that comfortable hitting the straight shot apart from at West Lanks the other week where I did I was swinging it very good I felt there and on days where you are feeling it very feeling like you're swinging it good I feel like you can hit it straight but you're not gonna be like that all the time another little thing when you're actually aiming away from the target make sure when you look up your last look is at your actual target like if you're aiming five yards right at the pin look five yards right at the pin don't look up and look at the pin that's something really common that you can do and then your last look is at the wrong place where you're not trying to hit it yeah i've got it pin high there as well just got to put across the green now before it goes dark it's been good time in this ball hole test me pace see if we can finish under par for these five finish on a positive note roll out roll out that's got a chance that's got a chance that's in that's in oh what a finish that is what a finish that is how's that happened how has that happened? How has that happened on the last there? That's fate, that. That's fate. That is fate, that. That's it. Oh, I'm so happy for the next four weeks after that. I haven't held one of them for so long. I had a few at West Lanks that I thought were going in, but I haven't held one of them for so long. And it happens on my last shot before I can't play for a while. So aggressive! How happy am I that I've come out to play there? I mean, it served the purpose. I've gone, what, bogey because of a three putt? Birdie, birdie, par, birdie. And tested pretty much every part of my game. Tested my punch out game, club pro guy, punch out game. Out the trees, tested my short game, my putting from one extreme to the other. One three putt, one like ridiculously lengthy hold one. And another good one for birdie. And I hit some shots where I didn't feel overly comfortable. And that's the whole purpose of it and hit some shots where I was very comfortable. I like that game, I'm gonna play it more often. When you get back out and you can play it, play it and let me know what you think. I think that's pretty much it from me. I hope everyone's doing all right, safe and doing what they can. If you wanna comment here, I'll try and reply, I'll try and reply to as many comments as I can. So anything you wanna put, just write it down below. I'll have plenty of time to respond. So thanks for watching. I'll see you next Tuesday and I'll see you down the line. What a putt that was. Just waving to me. People that watch me there, they, they've seen my birdie before. So yeah.